Hello, I'm Nearest Luke Cartographer, and this is the 24th video in my Fallout 76 Post Wastelanders main quest series. Here we are in front of Abby Singh's bunker where we finished up last time. In this video, we're going to be starting to do the quest Early Warnings, and we're going to be heading off to Raleigh Clay's bunker. I feel like I'm hearing something. Anyway, uh, his bunker is all the way down here next to Dire Chemical. So we're going to basically just follow the highway south. Let's get out there. Beautiful day so far. Sun is shining. Not too much of that yellow haze that you sometimes get. I mean, there's obviously some out here. It's amazing how much the feel of a, uh, a biome really is dependent on the, the filter that they put on the light. I mean, this is completely different from the ash heap or from the forest. Just very, just a very different feeling to it. All right, and here we get to see a little bit more of a. Uh, of these strangler vines destroying things throughout the mire. Oops, what the? Ah, oh, crap. No. <laughs> he didn't actually damage me too bad with that hit. He may not be as strong as I was worrying that he was. Oh, he's okay. Not a fan of the screen. There we go. Definitely still creepy, but uh, not terribly dangerous. Okay. Oh, what do we got there? A hunter. Is he not actually holding a gun? No, he actually is. Okay. Like in my rain later. She doesn't look much like he's hunting. We got There's him. no. You got what? Okay, well, I'm gonna keep on moving. I'm not really sure what he was after there. Okay, I think we got a checkpoint ahead. Now it could be Blood Eagles, it could be the Brotherhood of Steel. We'll find out, and it's hostile. At the very least, we didn't know that. Unfortunately, things are loading a little slow. Blood Eagles, okay. And you can see the far textures on that bridge that look terrible. I'm really hoping that whatever Bethesda does with their next engine, they make the far textures look better. Because, like, you look at games like, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Ah, jeez. Oh, grenade. The far textures in Red Dead Redemption 2 are just incredible. And given that Bethesda keeps working more verticality into their games, I think they need to implement some better far texture technology. If we're going to be able to see things through scopes, they need to look better than that. Anyway, though, let's take out this thing before it can hit us. Okay. And now we continue on down the highway. Now, there's always the question of, do you want to stop along the way to get uh, fast travel points? And I think what we're going to end up doing is we'll get... Oh. We'll end up getting the uh, the power plant, let's see, and probably the dam. Oh, the dam definitely, because that's right on the actual road. The power plant is uh, a little bit further off, but you can still get the fast travel point there pretty easy. It's the Thunder Mountain power plant right here. This was a site that was once controlled, well, first of all, before the bombs, obviously, by... We will not be doing uh, the power plant repair at this time, but there you go, we get the fast travel point now. Power plants are nice. I've talked about how to get those, about getting those things back on your side. But anyway, where I was beforehand, who controls it? Whatever power company controlled it before the war, obviously. But then after the war, you had the uh, the free states come in, take control of it for a little while, and then the Brotherhood of Steel, which wasn't even really the Brotherhood of Steel at that point. It was just uh, Taggarty's Thunder, Elizabeth Taggarty's uh, Ranger U unit. They took control of the site. Led to some uh, not great relations between the Brotherhood of Steel. And the uh, free states after that. They tolerated each other, but the free states really weren't big fans of the Brotherhood. You know, up until the point where they were keeping them safe from the the Scorch Beasts. And even then, to the best of my knowledge, they don't really seem to have known much about the Brotherhood of Steel. And they really didn't seem to actually acknowledge the, uh, the threat of the Scorch Beasts until the Brotherhood wasn't really protecting them anymore. Obviously, they were destroyed by the Scorch Beasts. But they don't seem to have recognized that the Brotherhood was holding back the tide until they weren't anymore. 
All right, so there's the dam. Crevasse Dam. And it looks like we've got some super mutants on the roof. There's the dam itself. Okay, it looks like there's nobody immediately out here at the moment. So I'm going to creep in just a little bit to get the fast travel point for Crevasse Dam. Now, you'll note that that sign back there said, uh, Crevasse Dam, West Virginia. It's interesting because we're kind of on like in like the border area between West Virginia and Virginia. Well, actually, this part, given that we're not down to Harper's Ferry yet, this would almost be the border between West Virginia and Maryland. Um, <laughs> of course, the map is really kind of screwed up in that way. But the this right here, the Robco uh, plant right here, this is actually within Virginia. And so we've got a sign here saying that this is in West Virginia. I don't know, it's, it's difficult to tell what's what, and everything's all jumbled up in the Fallout universe, so. Or at least in the representation of the Fallout universe that we get to play in in Fallout 76. I think it'd be interesting to have, because I feel like I've talked about this before, where the world that we get to view is not the entire world. And we get to view a facsimile of it because for gameplay purposes it would not actually be fun to play in the full real world. In the same way that if you were playing like World of Warcraft, which I used to play a ton of, there's like six farms that supposedly feed the entirety of the Alliance. Uh, part of the reason for that is it would obviously be incredibly boring if you actually had to like cross the hundreds of farms, if not thousands of farms that would be required to feed both the sides, you know? So it's one of those things where they give you a more interesting version of that world. But I think it would be interesting if they had like a, uh, almost a flight simulator version of the Fallout universe. Something where you could actually see the full breadth and scope of everything. Obviously, that would be a massive undertaking because it's not like you could do what Microsoft did with Flight Simulator and basically just scan the world. Uh, you'd have to create the world. And not only that, but I, I'm sure that they would do some things that would mess with canon without even attempting to mess with canon. And people already get upset when they don't mess with canon, but they don't like the new canon that's made. So... Okay, there we go. Alright, well, here we are at the, uh, at the edge of Raleigh Clay's bunker here. And again, like I said, there's the uh, dire chemical plant down there. Alright, let's uh, enter the password that we got from Abby Singh. Doors unlocked. Let's get in there. Next step is to find the replacement motors. If memory serves, they're in his generator room with the workbench. From there, you have the exciting task of finding some heating coils to upgrade them. This will make the fans more effective to fight the moisture created by the swamp. Good news is, I have two in my bunker. Bad news is, you need three more. Raleigh's sure to have some too, so do a sweep while you're there. After that, your best bets are Ella Ames Bunker and the nearby Relay Tower. Once you've got enough, head back my way. I've got your next step set up to play once you're back. Hopefully. Oops, I forgot to add. <clears throat> Scenario 1, Addendum. Raleigh's got a few schematics stashed away that can help you make some protective gear for all this swamp trekking. It'll help you blend in, make it hard for nature's latest evolutionary wonders to spot you. So, could be useful. Abby out! Okay, I'm not really sure where that voice was coming from. I would assume that it would come from our Pip-Boy, but it seemed like there was a speaker somewhere over there that I just couldn't see. So that's the terminal to get back out, but what about this one? Outgoing notifications terminal. The glowing swamp. I think we actually went over these last time, because these are the... Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we went over these last time. These are the uh, notifications that Raleigh Clay sent out to the rest of the Free States members. And Abby Singh, being a member of the Free States, she got those notifications. Ooh, Raleigh was, in a way, a leader of the Free States, in the same way that Sam Blackwell was. But at the same time, the Free States, it was a more loose organization than something like the Responders, say, where you could actually say that they had a leader and someone like Maria Chavez. Okay, so let's see. And so in that way, basically, they were all kind of their own leaders, you know. They they commanded their own ships in the form of these bunkers, you know. Anyway, uh, Madigan encounter. Is it recording? Make sure it's recording. I got it, Eddie. It's recording. Jesus. 
All right, Madigan. You want to explain why we found you out there tampering with our stuff? Hey, you guys are always holed up in your bunkers. How else can I get your attention? Besides, a crazy contraption like that? Of course I'm going to try to figure it out. By the way you guys came out, fully armed and ready to fight, I'm guessing it's pretty big. What you nearly broke was a Scorch Beast lure. It's the best defense we have against them. Whoa, you're telling me you're luring those things down? Uh, you got some balls, Free States. Even with your numbers, taking on a beast is no easy task. It doesn't just lure them down. We found some research and tech at one of the Brotherhood's old outposts. Hella realized if we could blast this Scorch Beast with a certain frequency, it disoriented long enough for us to go in and take it out. Nira Janabi started work on the tech. We tested it. And it works. This is a real game changer, Raleigh. If what you say is true. It's true, Hank. The system would be done if it weren't for those damn raiders. Look, if this is as big as you think it is, the fire breathers can handle any raiders. But I need to know how this system works and see it in action first. Hey, if you think we're gonna just reveal our work to an ex-Brotherhood member, think again. You wanna see how this system works? Well, you got some serious trust to earn. So this is an excellent log. Um, so one of the th many things revealed in there. I just want to say something real quick. Back in, geez, what was it, 2018? Early 2018, when they first announced Wastelanders, I decided I was going to go around and I was going to copy down all the terminal entries, holotapes, and notes, and all that stuff. This is around the same time I was going to start doing the Surveil series. Or was it later in the year they announced? Yeah, they announced Wastelanders later in the year. I, I started my whole copying down all the holotapes, notes, and everything early. Uh, because I wanted to learn the entire story of the game, and part of that is, like, figuring out the proper timeline of things, and I just got a chunk of it from that, because it's one of those things where it's like, unless you hear things and you have enough stuff in your mind, it's not going to make the proper connections. So, right there, I was always kind of wondering about those uh, Scorch Bees lures, but I hadn't thought about the Madigan Encounter holotape and its ramifications, because what that means right there is that those lures were built after the Brotherhood was gone, but before the fall of the Responders. And that was something that I had trouble figuring out in the past. And also the fact that he was looking to help them out here. They weren't wanting to help him. Or they weren't wanting his help because they talk about him being a former uh, a member of the Brotherhood. That actually is kind of in part based on a piece of cut content. Not entirely. Like he is known to be a former member of the Brotherhood. But there used to be a piece of content where he explained that he left the Brotherhood because the Brotherhood's changing mission from helping the people and finding and saving technology to finding and saving technology. Um... But right there, we got a piece of information. This is Hank Madigan before he heads up with that uh, with that piece of equipment. I can't remember the name off it off the, of it off the top of my head. I haven't recorded one of these in like two weeks because I've been doing those lore videos. Um, the uplink. This is right before he takes the uplink up to the top of the world because he was trying to help them out. And then he was lost. And then the fire breathers were lost. He was hoping to use the fire breathers to help them against the raiders. But he ended up being captured, and that's when they lost the uplink, and everything really fell apart again. So it almost seems like there was really, like, another time where the Free States and the Responders may have come together. But it was lost because Madigan was lost. He was the one missing link part right there that kept that thing from coming together. Anyway, we got uh, a note here. Well, not a note, a recipe for Delbert's Sweet Laboratory Tea. So learn that. And then there was a holotape as well, Never Ending Missions. There it is right there. like it's been non-stop missions for a while now. Gather supplies. Head out. Take a beat. Set up a thing. Take a few more beats. Come on. Heal up. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Most days, I'm not even sure I were still alive. <laughs> We've been working on this detection system for so long now, I feel like we'll never see the end of it. Detectors. Lures, uplinks. I think I'd rather die than head back to another relay tower at this rate. Uh. But Riley and Neerit say it's worth it. And I believe them. Those scorched are nasty business. And if I had the means to let people know they're coming, better yet, maybe take a scorched beast out along the way. 
Hell yeah, it saved worth it. So Eddie Hayes ran uh, Camp Venture back before it was Camp Venture, back when it was uh, this uh, West Virginia survival training camp thing called like Vest or something like that. Uh, anyway, out here, and not out here, in here, in this bathroom, they've got another one of these barrels. For some reason, Abby's Bunker has a barrel like this. I think most of the Free States have a barrel like this. I, I kind of think this barrel is maybe like soap, and so they kept it stored in the bathroom. I'm not really sure. Anyway, that's enough on that. Got a little kitchen here. I might steal some more of their junk here in a minute, but uh, let's take a look at this terminal. Raleigh's terminal. We got four entries here. Let's start with a new independence. Sam and I finally made the call. The Free States are officially underground. He handed over some documents declaring our secession and that was that. If there's any repercussions, they can have fun trying to bust in here and dragging us out. Trish and the kids are doing alright so far, although they're a little bit upset over missing out on the rest of the summer. So, he says right here that they can have fun trying to bust us out. The local intelligence group that was uh, set up in the uh, Sugar Grove Center, they were actually basically making plans for that long term. They didn't have the oper they didn't have the resources on hand to take care of the free stages just yet, but they were going to eventually break in here. Armageddon. The day of justification has come. I'm sure we all felt the impact of the nuke when it hit, although no one knows where it was. I've radioed a few of the others, and so far everyone's fine, if not a little shaken up. So they had been proven right, because they'd said before the war that the United States government was incompetent and they were going to start a nuclear war, and they ended up doing that. Of course, it was the Chinese who actually started it, but that's because the Americans were making uh, good progress in the ground war in China. God forgive me. I was up near the entrance today when I heard a muffled banging on the bunker door. They kept it up off and on for a while. From what I can tell, it doesn't seem to be any of our folks, so it's more than likely a survivor seeking shelter. It's not safe yet, so I can't open the door. And even if it was, I have no way of knowing who's on the other side. All I can do is pray Trish and the kids don't hear it. They don't need this on their conscience. And, honestly, I completely understand that mindset. How do you know that the other person on the other side of the door is not there to take your shelter? It's one thing, you know, if you could have someone nice that you share your, your shelter with, but you don't know if someone's there gonna come, come in, kill you, and you, your wife, and your kids, and just take your place. All clear. It's been two years since we went underground, and a little less from when the bombs fell. After talking to Sam and Ella, we're giving the all clear. It should be safe enough for people to come out and see what's left of the world. Hopefully we've stocked enough resources to be able to rebuild properly. And they went on to, uh, rebuild Harper's Ferry for seven years. Well, they were living there for seven years, anyway. And I'm looking forward to looking over Harper's Ferry again when we get there. We got another bedroom there. Uh, here, I mean. And I eventually am going to have to do a uh, lore video on Harbors Ferry and the Free States. And so this is actually good because I've now got the rest of the material so well in, in hand that uh, I should be able to do it pretty well. Okay, so we got Spruce Knob here. This is, of course, before it became Foundation. And uh, before it was a uh, Brotherhood outpost. The uh, pictures out here, let's take a look at them real quick. I identified this one earlier as uh, being Helvetia. And what do we got here? Helvetia again. And this is that coal tuple uh, that we actually went past when we were passing uh, the uh, Atlas Observatory. Well, sorry, Fort Atlas, as it is now. Let's see what we got back here. Actually, we were heading down the rest of this, I think. Yes. Okay, another... A oh. lot of big roaches here. Alright. What do we got here? Train station. I don't think that's anywhere in particular. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Beds, obviously. Some suitcases. Oh, another holotape. Family and so-called friends. It's been two weeks since I lost Trish and Marty. Two weeks since we lost Harpers to those things. Those scorched and that nightmare. Two weeks of keeping it together for Mike and Megan and all the others. Sam, where the hell are you? I can really use my best friend right now. This was our thing, you know. We, we were in this together. You started in with secrets, no-shows. You practically shoved Emily out the door. Now you're doing it to me. I was your best friend for over 40 years. I, 
trusted you to help me see this through. You acted like you gave half a damn about anything besides yourself. You, you could have helped me. Maybe I never would have made the decision to rebuild Harper's Ferry. Maybe half my family would still be alive. And a lot to unpack there, too. Uh, by the time he recorded this, Sam Blackwell was already dead. Uh, Sam Blackwell died before the fall of Harper's Ferry. He was killed by Agent Gray in his house, and that, or sorry, in his bunker, and uh, that was definitely before the fall of Harper's Ferry, uh, because Harper's Ferry fell in effect because the Enclave ended up falling, and uh, Agent Gray was dead before the fall of the Enclave. Uh, again, not anywhere in particular right there. What do we got here? Another one of those uh, images there. Okay. So yeah, we learned a little bit more there too, where uh, Raleigh Clay lost uh, at least half of his family in the fall of Harper's Ferry. Okay. And I mean, there's good reason that Sam Blackwell was in hiding even after the bombs, because he was in fact killed by the remnants of the government that he had seceded from in the past. So anyway, okay, right here we got the, some of those fan motors that we need. We also need to get Raleigh's schematics. See what's in here. Storage room. Like I said, the Free States have excellent, excellent storage. Okay. Oop. Greenhouse. One would have to assume that these are uh, grow lights in here. <laughs> okay. Brain fungus there. Mute fruit. Glowing fungus. Corn. Got some uh, gourds. More glowing fungus. More corn, carrots, more glowing fungus, gourds, and silt beans and gourds. Not bad. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah, the schematic is right here, I think. What is it pointing to me, me to over here? Heating coil. Okay. And then along with that, let's see. We got plan for shrouded wood armor. Okay. Okay, so that's what that is. Before, in the last video, we'd read that uh, there were wood armor plans here that could make you um, basically sneak easier. And it turns out there's actually just a mod to make it so that you've got uh, wood armor that makes it so you can sneak better. It's not that wood armor just does it by itself. Okay, so now we need more heating coils. Uh, we can... Uh, we found the one that was here, but we need one more from Ella Ames' bunker, two from Abby's bunker, and uh, one more from the relay tower. We can take a look at the map. You can see the relay tower is out here. Ella Ames' bunker is right there. And again, there are, there's Abby's bunker with the two there. Okay, let's make sure that there's nothing else here before we move on. Did I already come in here? Just close everything up? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem with closing doors behind you. You're not sure if you've actually checked everything, if your mind is in multiple places at once. Okay, well, I think that we've actually uh, gone just about as far as we can in the time uh, allotted for today. Uh, next time we'll be going ahead and getting the rest of these heating coils and finishing early warnings, I believe. Anyway, though, this has been the Irresolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.